right, here we are. I got uh, finally received the, the Teco Brahe, or uh, I saw a thing on YouTube. It's Tushul Brahe, he's an astronomer. That's what they named the Octavia after. Uh, anyway, there's the enclosure. Here's the bag of parts. Can you see that? So we are going to put this together. See what it sounds like. Always got to have a nice bright halogen lights. What I'm using, and a really good uh, soldering gun, or better than your simple little single wand. You want something with adjustable temperature and a nice rack to put everything in. And your sponge that you put to uh, distill water on. Oh, what was that? But this is what it'll look like when we get done. I got the instructions. This is a kit from General Guitar Gadgets. And this is what it's going to look like on the inside once we're done. So, we're off to the races, get this thing done, and we'll test it out. Well, I read all the instructions. First thing you got to do, and I haven't done it yet, is to check the parts, make sure everything's there, and I advise you to do that, because the first amp kit that I bought and built, actually the only other kit I've ever messed with, uh, it was missing parts, so I really couldn't start on it till I got all the parts. So you definitely takes a while. I mean, there's a lot of little parts. Look at those little resistors. And here's the transformer. It's a transformer-based Octavia. So yeah, be sure you count everything. And this is why you need a bright light. I'm having a hard time. Check out your parts. Uh, the, actually, these three pots look the same, but they're not. One's a 50k value, one, 1,000, or 50,000, 1,000, and 500,000. So uh, there are different values with different tapers, so you gotta be sure you get that in the right place. This is just wiring. Knobs, pads for the enclosure. This keeps the board in place inside, so stick. Uh, the battery clip where you hook your 9 volt battery. And you have two different types of jacks. You have a stereo jack, this one with the three different layers, and then you get a mono jack, just to ground and tip. So, uh, this bag is capacitors, which I haven't finished counting those. This is the resistors, which I'm having trouble seeing the colors that well. And this is the transformer with three transistors in there, which I'm sure I'll get to get those correct, and a couple of diodes and the LED light. And here's the circuit board. PCB. That's it. Looks like everything's there. I just have to count these resistors. I'll tell you what, they're not joking when they say you need a magnifying glass. Trying to identify the color bands on these little resistors. You can see how small the thing is. It's brown, yellow, black. around the, the brown mark is on the end of every one but sometimes it, it's one on each end so it's confusing all right I started populating the PCB printed circuit board uh, 
Let's see if you can see that. A couple of four resistors on there right now. It's a little bit different soldering than what I'm used to. Um, I'm used to the small stuff. It's a little tricky. Luckily, I had some of this really thin solder, which I think helps because some of these things, I don't think you want them to touch the other eyelet. Um, and I've got the temperature at about uh, 640 degrees. I usually keep it around 650. But um, I've got four of them on there following the schematic. I've got this little tool here, which is kind of handy. I don't know if I really need it today, but I'm using it since I had it. Where you just uh, put the resistor in here. These things are so small, and then it helps you bend the leads to the right distance for the eyelets. Those are handy to have, they're a little tree. And you just fit it right in the holes here. So you do the resistors first. Let's see, I need to find R5. Resistor 5 is right here. 220K goes right here. Just stick them in there like that. It doesn't really matter what direction they go. Even though some people probably like to keep them all the same, but it doesn't really matter. Get it in there fairly tight. Bend these a little bit to hold it in place. And uh, just give it a quick solder. I like, I mean, I. They don't really give you any soldering instructions, so I had to look up a few things, but I do like it when the solder runs through the hole and goes to the other side. Just kind of makes me feel like I'm getting a better solder joint. Um, don't want to get it too hot because you can damage parts, but from experience over the years, I've never damaged a part yet. Even though there's a couple of times I use heat sinks. The uh, small wire is definitely the way to go on this small stuff. Small solder. So you right. definitely have to make sure you get these in the right position. If you look here, I don't know if you can see that, there's a little negative sign on this lead. And it's the same on all capacitors that have a polarity. This is a little minus sign right there. Hopefully it's focused. I also wanted to point out that the I just noticed that the positive lead is l always longer, so that's another way you can tell. Let me try this. Can't really tell if it's in focus or not, but just again to reiterate, the two black bands on the diodes right there need to go. There's two black bands on the circuit board that shows what direction they go, so be sure you get that right. Everything's there except the transistors. All right, the board is complete. Let's see if you can see a little transformer on there. Everything is ready to go. Only other holes are from the jacks that I need in the potentiometers. So it's ready to assemble. It didn't take that long. I, I took it slow when probably two or three hours at the most. The potentiometer's in. Mounting it just as per instructions. Goes in there like that. Little washer. Nut. Tighten it up. You know, that's pretty simple. And then, but 
you got to mount these things in the right order in order to get the wiring done easy. Okay, I got everything mounted inside. I thought the instructions were pretty good until it, it really didn't tell you when to put the switch in, but it did say put everything in. I mean, instructions are pretty close. It looks like there's a long wire on the LED and a short wire, which they show in the schematic, which I didn't notice at first because they're pretty close. So I'm hoping that I got that in right. I think I had the most trouble with the LED. Kind of messed up this little plastic grommet that holds it in. It looks okay and it's good fit, but it was had to punch it down fairly fairly hard to get the to fit flush. Got the pots in there. They're tight, switch is tight. This is self-sticking adhesive little tabs that hold the board in. And then I've got the 9 volt DC jack in there, which is pretty solid. So they tell you now to do all the wiring. Okay, things ready to go. Just put the knobs on there. I mean, it didn't take long. I forgot to say, but but uh, in all the instructions, I could not find anything about the LED, which is a diode. They do show it under the diode page. They really don't say how to uh, use this little black grommet thing to hold it in there. So I just guessed at it. And, and yeah, yeah, I think I got it right, but it was just hard to get in there. It looks pretty good now. So, and then also the transformer, it has a primary and a secondary. I don't know, can you see that? Uh, right here, there's a P, a P marked on there. Either way, that's primary. So there's only, the transformer only goes one direction. And that's it. Just watch the polarities and the resistors can go any direction. Diodes have to go one way. Uh, the germanium diodes, which are in here, they're kind of the clear resistor looking things. And the pots all have different values, so you have to get them in the right position or they won't work correctly. I think there's a... Uh, Let's see, a 50K linear, a 1K reverse log, and a 500K log. Those are the tapers. So you have to get those in the right position. This is a lead dress, which uh, is more important in amplifiers, but uh, see all the wires running kind of neatly. Keep the outputs as far away from the inputs as you can. It's just a rule of thumb. And just make it look fairly neat. Don't run any wires over the board itself. And they tape these together. I use these little uh, tie wraps, plastic tie wraps that you get at Home Depot. Those work real well. If my well, I guess I need to film some of the pain. I shouldn't be working this late, but this is the hard part. Running these wires in here. Trying to get in these little holes, and one thing on the instructions right now, it shows that there's supposed to be a jumper between here and here on these two little holes, and I don't see it on their picture, so I've got to email to see if that's right, but just getting these little short wires in here, and they are short, installed between the pots and everything, it's kind of a pain, but... Hopefully it's worth it. Right here, there's supposed to be, it shows a jumper between these two little eyelets. And, huh, I'll show you what I mean. They give you a picture on their website. And right there, they, I don't see a jumper there. 
So I was looking at this picture too to make sure everything looked about the same. But on the schematic, if you look at it, on this wiring schematic, you'll see they show that little jumper wire right here. Goes up and over between those two eyelets. And I emailed JD to see if I was supposed to add that. And he hasn't responded yet. But in the meantime, I looked at the regular schematic. And just tried to figure it out since I've looked at these long enough. I'm still not an expert at it. Here's the transformer. Here are the two diodes. And as far as I can tell, this is where the jumper is between the two diodes. So I'm assuming it needs to be there. So I'm going to put that in there just in case. That jumper. Then we should be ready to test drive it. Yeah. Alright, we're ready to check the voltages. I'm still nervous about plugging this thing in. But the good thing is, is I, I had a you know, one of those funky heavy duty batteries that everybody says sounds better in fuzzes and stuff. But it was actually lower voltage. This voltage sheet starts out with 9.4. Can you see that? It's for all the all the Q1, Q2, Q3 of the transistors. Collector, base, emitter. Took me a while to figure out which ones were which. It starts out with a 9.4 volt battery. So I went and got a new alkaline battery and it was about 9.39. So I checked the voltages and they were right, spot on, at least on the Q1. So the base, I do know now, is the center pin. Here's my meter. Got the, got the ground stuck in the screw hole. So I go to the center of the transistor. This is how you check to see if the wiring is right. And it was 3.67 and they show in 3.6, so that was great. Then the, I this side, this side over here must be the 4.3, that's the collector, that's dead on, 2.91, or they're showing 3 for the emitter, that's pretty darn close, so that's good, so let's check the next one. I had to check it first, and actually sounds pretty cool. Uh, I'm going through the same rig that I've been going through, the basement and the Leslie. Oop, I wasn't supposed to do that because it's on. Um, either way, I've got the 9-volt battery in there, but right now I've got it hooked up to my fuel tank 9-volt uh, supply. I hope it's 9-volt. I need to check it, actually. I've got 12 and 18 volts on that thing, but I'm pretty sure they're all 9. I use the... 18 on my OCD and there's only one but uh, there it is it's all together seems to be working fine I'll let you hear it right now never really worked on any uh, solos for this so Up, which volumes down a little bit. I got the, and they always say that the. <laughs> Let's do the fuzz here.
That's the fuzz face. Let's see what happens when we go through this with a fuzz face. on this is I put VIP VIP right here just so I know volume intensity and pregain I hear if you back down the pregain a little bit it's supposed to sound better but if you max them all out sounds like it could be crazy whoa some sputtering that's uh Intensity and pregame max out volume. <laughs> On. Let's just do this is pure uh, Octavian now. Yeah. I think it sounds like it's going to blow up.
just an out of control mosquito. <laughs>
like that one. <laughs> All right, that's about as good as I can do right now. Talk to you guys later. Uh, I'll have to say the thing seems to have potential for 58 bucks. You can't beat it. All right, maybe you might want to get one.